has two applications to consider along with the report on pipe appeals. I am happy with this and intend to take the business in the order set out on the agenda. Item one is apologies for absence. Yes, Chair. Uh, we've received apologies from Councillor R. Hall, who was substituted by Councillor S. Clough. Councillor L. Hartzell, who was substituted by Councillor T. Lacey. Councillor M. Foster, who was substituted by Councillor L. Davis. We've also received apologies from Councillor A. Powell and Councillor D. Hancock. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I don't think there's any other apologies. Uh, no, Chair, that's it. Thank you. Item two, declarations of interest. Members are requested to declare the existence and nature of any disposable pecuniary interest and or other interests not already on their register of interest. In any item on the agenda, a withdrawal from the meeting at the appropriate time. Do any members have interests to declare? Not the seat, Chair. Item three, the minutes of the last meeting. We now have the minutes of our meeting held on Tuesday the 26th of July, 2022. Are we happy that they are on correct record? And if so, is there a number? No, Chair. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Ribbit. All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you. The motion has been carried. Lorraine Hitsmith. Around meeting, we have two applications, but before we start, I would like the clerk to explain for the benefit of members, speakers, and those watching on YouTube how we deal with them. Thank you. Right, thank you, Chair. This is the procedure for considering the business this afternoon. The Chair will introduce the application and ask the planning officers to refer members to any late comments or updates received since the agenda was published. These have now been published on the Council's website and hard copies have been circulated to you. After this, the Chair will ask any speakers to address the meeting. There is only one speaker registered today who will be speaking on the first application. They will have three minutes to put forward their views. There will be a reminder given by the clerk that 30 seconds remain. At the end of the three minutes, members of the committee will have an opportunity to ask the speaker questions, if necessary, in order to clarify any points they have made. After the speaker has addressed the committee and answered any questions, they will be allowed to remain in the meeting, but they will not be allowed to participate further from that point. The chair will then open the meeting for questions to officers. It will then be a debate by the committee and finally a determination on the application by a vote. The votes will be taken by roll call. Finally, members, this meeting is being recorded, which will then be placed on the council's website. Please note that others may choose to copy this recording. Thank you, chair. Thank you. That moves us on to the first application, item four, which is NED forward slash 21 forward slash 00214 forward slash FL. In line with our normal practices, I'm going to ask the planning officers to tell us about any late comments and to give a brief presentation showing any photos and plans of the site. I will allow the officers to complete the presentations, consequently, members. Could you please reserve any points of order or questioning about the process until the end? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, as the application title suggests, the application in effect seeks to retain the existing building as well as the purposes of cafe use over to the general convention. Excuse me, would you be able to talk just a little bit louder into the mic? Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, in addition, the application also seeks to attain associated development, including an extension to the cafe building, which is used for the purposes of a baby shop and booking office associated with the fishing rates. In summary, due to the circumstances set out in the committee report, including a recent assessment of a lawful development application, 
officers with the view that the development represents an acceptable form of development. In addition, officers do not consider that to be a technical reasons why the application should not be supported. Next slide, please. So the first slide shows the site location plan, which shows the specific site application etched in red, with additional land with the applicant's ownership etched in blue. Next slide, please. The next slide shows the site layout plan, which shows the site in greater detail, including the built development the application seeks to attend, namely the cafe building and attached to the shop. The plan also shows some of the parking provision be marked for customers at the cafe. This parking provision is also existing. The panel shows, shows the means of vehicle and pedestrian access to the site, or an access track that joins the highway at the Keepers Lane and Smelting House Lane. The track crosses Barlow Brook by a grade two listed bridge, known as the Lee Bridge, which is also marked in the plan. This plan also shows the nearest residential properties to the application site. Which positioned at the junction of Keepers Lane and Smelting House Lane, and in grey at the top left of that image. Next slide, please. So, moving on to the plans, um, this uh, slide shows the proposed four floor plans, um, which detail the potential of the build form to which the application seeks to attain. The top of the plan shows the that the building is for print as existed, including the main shop, which is existed also. Uh, next slide, please. Again, these are the operational drawings show the view um, cafe. And the next slide, if you move on to that one, please, <coughs> shows the cafe with the, with the main shop, which is a, a more recent addition, but as mentioned, is it's actually a seat show and Next slide. So moving on to some photos of the application site. Um, this photo shows the extent of the built development which the application seeks to attain. So um, the foreground is the cafe with the veranda, uh, which is a bit of issue as well at the front. And along that, you can just about see the bait shop, which is, which is attached. Uh, next slide, please. So this, this slide shows the photo rather shows the building in the context of the existing fishing lakes and some of the allocated parking. There's an existence for the use of those using the fisheries and, and those that access the cafe. Next slide, please. So this shows the view towards the site access and the track serving the site. It also shows uh, more areas that are used currently for parking vehicles um, for those using the fishing lakes. And onto the final slide, please. Uh, finally, this shows the access track and Lee Bridge. Um, this is the track on which the application site is, um, is accessed. This also forms a, a rival way. Um, and it's the highway itself to Cass Lake and Keepers Lane. That concludes the presentation. This thing that just changed before you move on just to vice members and to note the late comments report that was circulated yesterday. And there is some to meet the final page there. Members will have read it, I'm sure, but just read to make reference to some revisions to the recommended conditions. Thank you. I believe we have one speaker for this application, and that's the agent, Doug Han joining us by Zoom. As the craft explained, he will have three minutes to get over his points. He will be informed when 30 seconds remain. As members, you can ask him to clarify any matters that have been raised. But remember, your question should only relate to points which he has already made. Thank you. Mr. Hearn, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So you have three minutes when you're ready. Brilliant, thank you. Well, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Members. Um, my name is Doug Hahn from WSP, and I'm speaking uh, on behalf of the application today. Uh, the Fisherman's Friends Cafe is a, an important facility at the fisheries complex and has been serving the fishermen and local community using a site for many, many years. 
the applicants acquired the site shortly before the uh, pandemic and have spent a lot of uh, time, energy and money in upgrading and tidying up the site and improving the facilities. And the cafe is a critical element of that, um, with the fisheries being a long established use that's been uh, enjoyed by local people for decades. The cafe, as you've seen, sits well within the fisheries complex. It's, it's well screened by significant tree stands and vegetation and of itself is a relatively modest cabin structure, which has been serving hot cold food snacks for, for, for many years to fishermen, people walking through the site, riding bikes, etc. And also members of the local community, perhaps walking their dogs. Um, the the veranda was added in part due to covid uh, restrictions that have been brought into place um the we're pleased that officers uh, consider the development is an appropriate use in the green belt um as we do and that the relatively modest scale of what is there uh, accords with green belt policy about encouraging outdoor use and recreation and certainly the the facility does it serves people who are enjoying the outdoors at a fishery complex and wider area the cafe has been improved, as you've seen from the photo just displayed by, uh, by the officer then, to, to create an attractive uh, structure within the site, uh, which blends in with the, the, the wooded surroundings. And we believe is, is a, you know, a, a pleasant structure that not only serves a good purpose, but is in keeping with the area. The officer's report has shown that, that there are all technical matters that have been resolved and there aren't any concerns around noise, odour or nuisance. Um, with the, the cafe being sited uh, around 100 metres away from the nearest property with a substantial area of woodland in between. Um, from a highways perspective, it's encouraging to see that the Derbyshire County Council Highway Officer confirms uh, that the proposals are acceptable in their views and won't cause an, a significant adverse effect upon the highway, which is it's not surprising given that it's been operational exactly. in its current form for quite a while. Um, the access to the site is down, is down narrow lanes, but, but they are, are, are narrow and speeds are low and fishermen tend to visit the site and spend a long time there fishing um, rather than coming and going. Um, the revised hours um, set out in the officer's report are helpful as they fit with especially summer opening hours and therefore overall we are pleased with the officer's report and we support the recommendation and respectfully hope that you are able to support it too. Thank you. Have we any questions for the speaker? Councillor Armitage. Thank you Chair. Yeah it's uh, all very interesting what you like to say. Why didn't uh, your applicants apply for planning permission in the first place. I mean, we can't just put buildings up without planning permission. Could you explain, please? Yes, yes, I can. Um, the, the committee report sets out a, a sort of complex history. Um, our client, the current owners, acquired the site around 2019-20 um, with the building largely, as, as you've seen on the photos before you, they added the veranda and the, the tackle shop. Um, the building orig originally, as the officer report states, um, hadn't been built in accordance with the 2012 permission. So that was, was almost 10 years ago. Um, the applicant wasn't aware that putting a veranda on would have constituted uh, any form of development. And, and the tax shop or the bait shop you'll see is a, a, a very small structure. Um, they they undertook those works before seeking our advice. Um, as, as planning consultants, we would advise them of the need for those consents. Um, but we've reached reached a position where we needed to try and uh, work through to get a, a, a sort of reconciliation of what is there now on the site. Um, and that's that's the, the purpose of making the application now is effectively to, to tidy up um, the situation in terms of what is there on site. Uh, surely, uh, when the uh, applicant bought this uh, property, he would have been a search, and the search should have showed up that this uh, building or buildings uh, didn't have planning permission. 
in in response to that um i i can't comment as i wasn't involved at that time and and um i say i haven't seen anything from any legal searches um however i think as the officer report suggests the the drawings for the consent from 2012 uh were pretty much hand drawn drawings were not terribly accurate and it, it, it took quite a lot of work between uh, the officers and ourselves to to get to position that the building built wasn't in accordance with the original plans. The the original plans are not very accurate in terms of what they portray. Um, and so there was permission for a cafe building. It's just that what had been built was not not fully in accordance with those plans it was a building roughly in the right location um and of a similar configuration but 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 a little bit larger than the consented plans from 2012 um but the the amount of information is, is, is pretty limited so that, that's why uh, it, it took a while for it to come to light as part of the the planning process that it it it, it didn't have a permission but there has always been a permission on the site for a cafe building um, and there has been uh, it's been granted two times and there's so that there has always been a permission it's just um it has transpired that what is there does not fully match what was on the original consent from 2012. yeah i'd just like to clarify you just said that dcc had got no concerns well according to this from what i can read it's 7.37 They've actually said that they want part of the um, the lane widened five by five meters, and um, so that there's no sort of um, cars waiting and that. And I do worry about the access to this area. So, um, so why did you say that DCC had no concerns when the planning officers and DCC have said that they, need, you know, this area needs to be widened? Um, uh if I didn't say it, I meant to say they had no objections. Um, yes, there's a condition requiring uh, a, a short length, length a w widening of a short length of the access way. Um, but their, their overall conclusions are that there isn't a significant adverse effect uh, upon the highway. Um, and the, the, the access effectively serves, serves the fishery and has done for, for for many many decades um so yeah with the condition proposed which 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 is reasonable um the dcc haven't raised any highway objections um i, I mean i've been looking at it just briefly and i i find that quite quite amazing that dcc haven't because if this is going to be opened up to the public even more, I think the traffic will be a lot more. So the access is going to be causing a lot of problems. It's not just for walkers and uh, cyclists. And also, you know, the, the bridge, I, I worry about that with it being a, a listed bridge. It's very old. Um, I mean, is there anything that's going to be done to sort of strengthen that for the amount of vehicles, maybe heavy goods vehicles that will be going over with food? lorries and things like that. I mean, I might be out of context here, but from reading it, that's what, what I'm worried about. In, in, in terms of access, um, the, 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 what the applicant should play application seeking is pretty much what's been happening over the last 10 years insofar as the cafe has been operating um, to serve the fishermen and, and, and others visiting the site. Um, I think you'll probably appreciate from the scale of the, of the cafe, it, it's, it's pretty small. Um, it, it is it is a, a facility that serves lar largely the fishermen on the site or people walking through. Um, it, it, it of itself won't generate a lot of traffic. Uh, the fishery it generates the majority of the traffic that visits the site because people are bringing equipment. Um, but the cafe itself it, it, it is not of such a scale that's going to attract people driving to it for miles. Um, the, the existing access um, it, it, it's established and has been in use for, as I say, many, many years. Um, in terms of visits to the site, the majority of visits are cars. Um, and given the scale of the cafe building, um, it, it, it shouldn't and doesn't need significant amounts of servicing. Um, I know there was a photo in the in the late pack showing um, a larger vehicle visiting the site, but I'd imagine that that's probably a very rare occurrence because I'd imagine that most vehicles visiting the site will be smaller vehicles because of the scale of the facility it doesn't require significant amounts of servicing and you know many local people who wrote in in support of proposals will clearly walk down there it's a pleasant walking route and bridleway so um 
in, in that respect, um, it, it, it shouldn't there shouldn't be a significant change to the current situation really in terms of in terms of in terms of use because that, that's how it's been operating for around 10 years. Um, regards to the bridge, um, no works are being proposed to the bridge. Um, you're right, it is a, a, an old listed bridge, but no works are being proposed and, and, and none are being suggested as required in order to uh, to make the use acceptable. It's more about um, regularising the, 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 the cafe building, but the use of a cafe and the use of the fishery is, has, has been going on for decades on the site. Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Chair. I think some of my funders have been stolen. Uh, Yes, I have an issue with the road in, road out. I'm sure somebody somewhere could look at making that one way in off the bend and then exiting onto Overlees and not being able to turn left. So you can turn right down into Barlow and spin around, however, probably would make it safer. I have an issue with the bridge as well. If that, if that should, looking at it now with the refuse lorries and the, anything that's going into pumping and pump out as the picture show in the back, uh, they're, they're quite significant lorries now. So if that bridge fails, who, who actually bears the brunt of the cost to put that ride? That, that isn't anything that I, I'm. I, I've got information on. I imagine if it's, uh, it's, it's not in the applicant's ownership. I don't believe. Um, and if it's a, if it's a bridleway bridge, but it, it, it's an established established access point to the fisheries which has had vehicles passing over it for, for many many years and cars, um, and cars, i agree but it's not yeah. like, you know huge refuse lorries and as you can see on the pack huge pumping lorries and so on and so on yeah i mean i i, I i'm not sure when those photos were taken um but i'm not aware that huge tanker lorries would visit the site i'm not sure what reason they would be for visiting the site um you know the, the small cafe building doesn't generate the need for huge tankers um so i'm not sure the context of, of that picture or when it when it was taken um i know from the photos which were in the late pack which showed cars queuing up um the the operator suggests that he wasn't sure when that was taken but the only time they've ever had queues was when the pandemic was lifted and the first day people were desperate the first day they opened people were desperate to get back fishing um but but generally speaking you've seen from the photos it, it, it's a pretty modest cabin um it doesn't need significant large vehicles to service it um so um it, it, yeah I, I don't believe that there's a particular issue with large vehicles visiting the site on a regular basis um, I, mean, I mainly agree with you you know yeah. i mean I, I do go down there and uh, i certainly go down for breakfast on a sunday you know and so on and so forth not sure whether i should declare that's interesting <laughs> the the flip side to it is i'm only worried about the bridge mm. bridge is quite a significant bridge and it worries me if that does fail who's going to pay for it that, that bothers me um in, you obviously read the pack, and at 3.2, the original replacement building, the usage was conditioned on um, the snack cabin being used purely and solely for fishing members, although myself, who's not a fishing member, must be sneaking in, uh, also uses it. So th there is a lot more traffic, and I think something does need doing with the traffic down one lane and out the other. Uh, but the rest of it, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy with the building. No issue with that. I just think there are a few fundamental things to get right with it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the planning officer? Councillor Councillor Armitage, Councillor Lugu. Thank you, Chair. My, my uh, question will be to Adrian and the officers, and, and it's really what I've just asked the, the, the gentleman just about the bridge and repairs and the DCC bit where we could use one way in one way now, I'm sure, or, or do something about it to make it a little bit safer for people walking up and down. I've never seen it as bad as it is in this pack, that's for sure, and I do walk it quite regularly. So I, I don't have those concerns, but I would like to see something done. Comment on that, Adrian, please. Just, just on that, Chair, no, colleagues to my left might have thoughts on this as well. But the, the issue of vehicle management is not something that we've gone into any detail with, with the applicant. 
and if, um, if we're of particular concern to members, it's something we would need to discuss with the applicant in terms of how that may work. Um, my own view, Chair, as set out in the, in the report, as we've set out as officers, is that there's been a long standing use of the site for fishing which members have discussed. So I don't know how much traffic there would be without the cafe use at all. I'm not sure there would be some because. So it just seems to me to be well used and well patronized. But that would be something we would need to discuss with the applicant if indeed that were possible to have a one way in, one way out system, which would involve this casual, I'm sure, going through the site, round, back and through over the east into the village. I believe there would be no other way of doing it. So it would be quite a circuitous route. Just in terms of the listed bridge, again, as, as we set out in the report, the maintenance of the bridge would fall to the owner. So if there were issues in terms of its maintenance repair, that would fall to the owner. But with it being a listed bridge, there is a requirement on the owner to upkeep it to an appropriate standard and get listed the consent as necessary to do any works or alteration as opposed to repair. Is that the waterways, Adrian? Um, are you being consulted on that's all I'm trying to find out here. We consulted the county council's highway authority, but they've not indicated that they are owners of the bridge. Um, the, the condition that's recommended by officers would require the widening of the track closest to Smell House Lane to avoid cars queuing back onto the highway. That's the reason why it's behind that condition. And, and there's been no suggestion from the applicant or Mr. Hannes, you mentioned that condition is unattainable or, or inappropriate. But we've not sourced any more information in terms of the ownership of the bridge. We've not transmitted that at all. I'm, I'm happy with the, with the thing that's in front of us. I just think they're just the devil's in the details sometimes with the safety aspect coming in and out of sight. But as, as you rightly say, it's been there for decades and it's a great facility. One way to continue. Yeah, the, the only thing just to bear in mind here is that's right, it's alluded to the chair that the Dating back to the start of the century, there has been a facility there, a, a staff cabin, a cafe, and I, I can't have an half say that's only been used by fishing in all that time. Say so that, although there has been a condition on it. But again, that's referred to in the report in, in terms of the enforceability of that condition of the rivers. Thank you, Chair. Thank Thank you, Chair. Well, if we go and look at uh, going back to the bridge, uh, uh, it's risky. It can't be altered. I don't suppose uh, it's under an engineer's report to say what way to Prince Channel. It's all right saying, well, it's been used for years. Yeah, well, okay, it can be used for years, but it's got a limit of life. And you put a lorry like that, it's a cesspool empty in lorry like this. Uh, and its weight, you must be looking at 25 tons. So it's a bit different to a horse and cart, and an ordinary car for a start. I mean, if it drops in, somebody could be killed. Uh, and that is a thing. And the other thing is, it's a cafe. Uh, and you say, well, uh, there won't be a cesspool around here. Presumably, this uh, cafe has a septic tank that has to be emptied, or whatever you like. Uh, and the other thing is uh, the Murphy principle. Uh, perhaps somebody could explain exactly what it is. <coughs> yeah, as regards the, uh, the drainage on the, on the side, I uh, suppose so with sewage, um, we've, we've taken the view that there is an existing operation on the side that would generate some vehicle removals to or from the site and, and as officers what we've done is in effect weighed up the the anticipated increase in vehicle movements uh, arising as a consequence of the cafe use and as alluded to previously and in the officer report we consider that the cafe is is limited by its scale so its capacity will be limited by its scale so in terms of vehicle removals to and from the site um, in, if you take it in the context of the wider expanded use as, as a fishing um, as fishing lakes, uh, there would be significant 
consequences as previously mentioned in terms of the repairable things that the owners would be on the land able to, to ensure that it's kept in a state of good uh, repair. Um, so hopefully that's answered your question to some degree. So are you saying that uh, what are the toilet facilities there? It's a cafe and environmental health uh, for it to be licensed. Uh, saying that uh, you have to have toilets on premises, whether or not it's for uh, public use or whatever, is irrelevant, but it still have to be empty and you have to use a vehicle like the one we see in the boat. Uh, there is a toilet on the site. Uh, the assumption is that actually used by not only those using the cafe, but also by, by fishermen. So is it on the septic tank or is it on the main? Because that's my question. Just having looked through the application form, which I see up in the those details. The application form, which I just give the specifics how the foul sewage is to be disposed of, it's um, by other means, so it's not uh, accessible in septic tank or main sewer or package treatment plant, it's uh, it's for the so we have no more details in the application. I think we need to know. So that's 
<coughs> getting some nods from my left. Okay, so uh, I'll explain that as well as I can. Uh, that's the Murphy principle, right? As uh, say, came out with the web case as well, so that they took hand in that. So none of the conditions which were originally put on uh, can be implemented now. Well, again, as the, as the report goes into in, in, in that detail, Chair, the, the building that's been erected on the site isn't the building that was granted planning permission in 2012. Right. Therefore, it's a different building. It's not authorised in, in those terms. And therefore, any condition attached to the 2012 permission are pertinent because the development's not. Just fall back onto the planning commission. It's an unauthorised building. So in effect, the cafe, as it stands, would operate without restriction. So no restriction in terms of only fishermen or anything such as that. Mm. It could have, if, if it is permitted to stay, it would stay without that restriction. Hence, our it, it's all set out in the yeah. chronology of it as to why officers have arrived at the conclusion that we have, and it's. Tied back in as far as 1999 when the original permission was granted on the site, and then even further back to when permission was granted for the wider site for its use in association with the fishing. That dates back into uh, pre me 1970s. So, yes, it's, it's, so we, we've arrived at our conclusion yeah, that all those see, bricks up. We've not come at it backwards. Yeah. Right. Assume a bit of a farce if you get away with anything. Well, that, that's a different, that's a different um, <laughs> question, Chair. We can have a, a wide discussion about um, the four year rule, the 10 year rule, enforcement, uh, expediency, etc. Um, but, but in terms of the application, as members will be aware, we should consider the application on its merits, not the fact that it's a retrospective application. Uh, I hear what members say in terms of retrospective applications, but I'm afraid as the law stands, you need to set that aside and just consider the development of the funds planning and funding areas. Are there any other questions? Councillor Jones, then Councillor Ridgeway. Yeah, is it advertised at the top of the lane? So people just come into the cafe, or is it just people that know it, that know the cafe's there? The short answer to that question, Chair, is I don't know because I've not studied. I know that as soon as you enter the site, there are directions to the, to the cafe. So if you were just using the driveway that goes over the bridge and then up the hill, the foot battle turns right, you would see signage at various levels of permanence on the gate or near to the gate. As you get into the site, yes, the signage becomes quite clear that there is a cafe building there. Short answer, Chair, I don't know, but I, I don't recall seeing signage at the top of, I think it's, it's lay, as you grab the site, the, the, the road that goes up to the left, up towards, I don't know, it's Old Barlow rather than the other road that goes towards, I don't know, it's Barlow, but we I mean, can really pay be able to uh, provide more information on that. But I don't think there's any wider signage. Not, not significant signage anyway, not that the highway network she goes to the bar. I've, I've never seen any signage, no, no, no. So not, not on the main roads. That's what, top. you know, I don't think we should advertise for more people to come, that's all. Um, right, um, the other thing is about the bridge. Is there any way that we could recommend that it is um, assessed for the way to somebody has a look at it? I know we don't really know who owns it, do we? I, I'm, I would, I, and again, I don't know, but I would imagine that the applicant has some knowledge, if not ownership in his own right, has some knowledge of who owns it, because I presume he has a right of way along it and across it, I, I presume. In, in terms of assessing those elements, if members were, were interested in a discussion and consideration about traffic management, we would need to go back to the applicant. We brought the, the issue to members at this point because, as um, I was saying, we just had with Councillor Arlington, if the council were to 
wish to take action regarding the use and the buildings at, at times where actually don't get. So we wanted to get it to the members without being part of the next anyway. That's notwithstanding our recommendation in terms of but if members wanted more information in terms of sewerage disposal, how the bridge structurally works, and traffic management, we would need to go back to the applicant and that was probably a bit of a more issue. Okay. If those, those issues are seen as integral to members' consideration, then that's, that would be every course of action that we also have. Um, Adrian's just said exactly what I was going to recommend is that we ask for a deferment and get a little bit more clarification on the security of this bridge, I think, and, and the weight thing because it is a listed bridge. And also, I, I, with um, Councillor um, Elliot's suggestion about looking at one way in and one way out, I've got no problem with the, the building side of things. I just think we have to look at the safety side of. of the bridge and also the access in and out. So I personally think that we need to go through a deferment with those, just for those particular things on this instance. That's right. Uh, Adrian, can I ask this question? I mean, I, I have no issue with this. If we're looking at we're looking at the veranda stroke tackle shop, uh, and we've we've opened up a can of worms with the safety thing and the bridge and so on. Can we deal with this and then get the other bits done after? Is that doable? The, the only way that we could deal with that, I think, is if members were reminded to to run planning, which would be to address those, those issues by way of condition. But the the outcome of that would be then matters for officers to consider. It would be matters that you bring back to members if you would leave that then for officers to address issues of, of sewerage. Traffic management, if, if appropriate. Adrian, I have confidence in the officers without a doubt. So, me personally, I would quite happily go down the route to sorting out this um, application and letting you guys deal with the safety aspect and the widening of the road. Because when you talk about widening the top bit for 10 meters or five meters, in the whole scheme of things, it's, it's next, next in neg negligible. So, I'd quite happily go down the route and we'll deal with this and let, let the officers deal with the other side from DCC and the bridge. Because I've no doubt if that bridge fell in, it would get put up pretty sharply, otherwise we'd have no access to the cafe and facilities anyway. Just in, in terms of that, Chair, the, the, the issue about the, the 10 metre widening is to enable vehicles to get off the highway network. So, as we said out of the report, it's then a matter of convenience for people using the fishing ponds and or the cafe and that's not a matter of highway safety necessarily because the track bikes are very efficient will limit speed and maneuverability of vehicles the the issues that we're talking about may not result in an appropriate track management system being to come through over leads for example you know. that's the thing um, you know that was off the top of my head that they could do it but they would have to turn right into Barlow, and then if they were going back to Chester, it's unless they did it in the other way, it's just a really tight bend onto it. And you're on a zigzag bend as well for, for your entrance and exit. But it's something that could be looked at, but I don't think that would alter my opinion of the actual application. If there are no further questions, we business, I'll open the floor for debate. I would like to, I know we've discussed about the bridge, but if you look on page 21, 740, it does say there that it was a, a former old route for the Packles and the town of Thornfield, but the bridge was widened and to take wheel traffic and substantially complete examples of the rural bridge engineering. So I would say that bridge is pretty tough if it's taking that sort of weight. And, uh, you know, when, when they built things up, <laughs> so the floor is open. That's our advantage. It's no thing. Uh, I mean, with regard to bridge, it's great to understand. Uh, I've uh, in the heritage been consulted about this. Uh, is it in the court and that? Uh, 
needs an engineer's report uh, as to the weight and the capacity. Chair, it's the building zone breaking down to to sort of the so no more consultations taking place I'm going to throw my two pens in now regarding the bridge. We've got a small bridge in the road on an exceptionally narrow lane. Again, it was classed as a heritage bridge, it turned out it wasn't, but we have 42 tonnes going over that bridge. Through the group, and it's still there. So what traffic this is down the line, I've got an issue with them afraid. And my concern is we're looking at the application of the forest and all the other conditions that we've raised along the way. But I'm quite happy to uh, listen to any further debate or then move to the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, overall, I have no problem with this. Uh, the only thing that sprung out to me was. Uh, the initial proposed plan and uh, if we're going to widen the track uh, I'll be opening it up to say that the any, any future extension will be viable uh, and that's the only thing that's kind of worrying me at the moment. I'm listening to Green Belt um, but are we opening it up to further extension in the future? I think that's something that would come back to the plan committee at the time. We can't prejudge it, but it's not widening the entire track of that. Yeah, yes, Chair, it's, it's just a question of thinking as well. It, the, as you see from the slides, there is quite a lot of historical hard areas that are not hard surface, but they're a ground, I guess, hard ground, plenty of car parking within the site. So the view we took up is that providing vehicles who were standing on the highway or having to back up on the highway as far as we could, that meant that the highway safety issue was addressed. It was then only a matter of inconvenience through people, customers or officially really and that's a matter for the on-site management of the traffic so that's why we just suggested, as requested by the highway authority, it was 10 meters back from the highway is wide to allow two vehicles to pass avoid that. To the highway chair, that's where we left it because we thought to be further required engineering works, they actually have a detrimental impact on the only rules there. Which is quite a in terms of further extensions to the capital building, which would be a possibility that would be controlled by, um, to a large degree, by the Green Belt policy. We would not allow any further disproportionate additional to that. To that Yeah, I think my worry is that the chip of history of not applying the planning commission and then just putting it all in and then to sort of uh, that, That's my worry on this one. Yeah, yeah um, we, we say it many times around this table retrospective is not against any law, against any planning law, against any anything. The only thing they do is they run the risk of us sitting around this table and saying we don't like it, take it down. It's not, it's not against any planning law. Okay. Councilor Miller? Councilor Miller, I've got something about the building. It's very conservative, it's a great tourist bridge, that hasn't got a weight limit on it. Really, people are up to the water. Also, it's laying wide, I think, about 110, we're moving any trees or hedges. On second point, Chair, and maybe there will be some resulting impact on, on the virtues of the track. First, I don't think it would result in the removal of any large trees. I think there will be some, will be some localised impact because we need to just wipe the verges. I'm not really concerned about the verges, it's just the hedges or trees. But what I'd suggest, Chair, if I may, that the, the conditions modified to require a scheme to be submitted to ourselves to ensure that we retain control over the why it works, and then if there is any, how we can address that action of that. I suggest we modify the recommended conditions require a scheme of works to be submitted rather than just a, a blanket widening section that would allow us to retain control. But the other Thank you. Before we move to the motion, I'm going to ask the clerk to read out how it goes. 
Yes, thank you, Chair. Please bear in mind, members, that a motion must be moved and seconded before the vote is taken. If an amendment to a motion is moved and seconded, then the amendment will be voted on first. If a motion is to be moved which goes against the officer's recommendations, then the member who has moved the motion must give the reasons for doing so. The reasons for moving the motion against officer recommendations should comprise the relevant planning issues and be supported by the evidence as necessary. If a motion to reject officer recommendations falls, or in other words, it is not passed, that doesn't mean that the recommendations are automatically approved. Rather, you will need to take a positive decision to refer the motion in favour of the recommendations on a different course of action. This will need to be approved by the committee through another vote. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Councillor Owen? Chair, I'll move officer recommendation, but with the um, recommendation, as Adrian explained, that the uh, widening comes through to them and they can decide on that. And also, if we can do it, Adrian, as we discussed earlier with TCC about the whether we can do ingress and egress from the I'd like to second that. Just on the, on the second point, Chair, um, to, to control that, I think we would need to impose a condition to require a traffic, senior traffic management to be submitted to an agree for themselves. Chair, I, I can't guarantee that would result in anything different than we have at the moment. That's fine, anyway. So does that mean that it's approved of as a recommendation subject to specific conditions um, to set out a scheme of works as discussed and then also a scheme of traffic management with the final conditions to be determined by the development manager? Yeah. That's it. No, no, no. I suggest Chair Lanta and I'll take the uh, roll call. Thank you. Councillor Armitage. Abstain. Councillor Cooper? Four. Councillor Clough? Four. Councillor Dayton? Abstain. Councillor Elliott? Four. Councillor Lacey? Abstain. Councillor Liggett? Abstain. Councillor Jones? Four. Councillor Ridgeway? Abstain. Councillor Rouse? Four. And Councillor Roof? Four. So that's six for the motion and five abstentions. The motion has passed, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. We move on to the second Second application for this afternoon is MED 4 slash 22, 4 slash 22, 4 slash 00618, 4 slash FL. This takes place in Drumfield. In line with their normal practice, I'll ask the planning officers to start. Thank you, Chair. First of all, just to refer members to the single late comments that was received yesterday, apologising. For being unable to attend this afternoon and attend the meeting, Chair. Just ask Alice to go to the first slide. This, this application, Chair, seeks to retain an agricultural building erected on land opposite a number of properties, the Bowshore properties north of Tromfield. It's an agricultural building, and as I say, it's sought to be retained for its erection initially without planning consent. 
So I just might have been the green belt chair does members will be aware a course of wealth in the green belt is appropriate development. So the primary issue as referred to by the Ward Council Ash Committee to consider the application to the impact of the building on the character of the area. As uh, Alice has just um, brought up, the, the site occupies an area of land on the east side of the former A61. So it leaves Strongfield North towards the Bowshaw roundabout. You can see on the slide that there is already a, a well engineered bell mouth into the site. And that accesses, as many members will know, the recently constructed water management facility in the uh, River Drone Valley to the southeast of where the site is. So that's not actually facilitating the building that was constructed to facilitate, I presume, the building works and the ongoing management of that facility. The site has shown on the slide chair in that crease to relieve the road and the access. Just a large scale shot of that. The building that's been constructed is in red. At the top of the slide, you see the track as it heads south east towards the passive water management. So we've gone down across the river trail and back in terms of the work the environment takes to do it. Thank you, others. So again, just a, a shot showing the site location change and just make out the building on the right hand side of the road just below the, the access to the Y shape. This plan of the building chair is a, a very simply constructed building that we saw on the scientific photos and slides yesterday. Thanks Alice. Let me have the to the next chair. Again, simple building, sort of cladding and timber boarding and then on a pitch roof. Thanks. Just a couple of slides, Chair, to reprise what we saw yesterday. That's a picture of the building. You can see the hedgerow that we saw on the slide yesterday, the roadside hedge, to the right hand side of there. And then I think the final slide, Alice, is looking from the road to the, the building. The report, Chair, makes reference to the new footpath that we talked of yesterday. I've walked the footpath and members may also walk the footpath. And views of the sides are, well, well, weren't possible for me, admittedly that was done during the summer, whether that would be the case in the winter. And as we saw yesterday, you'll see this site from across the valley, the, the properties that run along the Pony Lane, looking back across the site, but the reasons why we believe the location of this building is acceptable as set out in the report chair. Yeah. Thank you. No speakers, so we go straight into the questions if there are any for the officers. Councillor Armitage. Can you explain to me how this uh, fits into the uh, SS10, the North East Derbyshire Green Belt, and um, the Drumfield Naval Plan Green Belt? The one. In terms of a green belt chair, the construction of agricultural buildings in green belt is considered appropriate development. So, in terms of straight green belt policy, the building is designed and used for agriculture, so it would be appropriate development in those circumstances. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Councillor Jones? Yeah, um, I saw somewhere in the rhetoric about illumination, um, and then you talk about it being used for landing. Is this illumination we're talking about outside the building or inside the building? Yes, the condition chair, as recommended, would restrict no external lights, and so it would preclude lighting within the building it's just to try and ensure that the there will be light in the vicinity from the traffic and from the, the street lights and from all the properties from the cars, I presume, but it's just to try and include it with wider illumination in the countryside. So it would allow internal light and the external light. Any other questions? Yes. 
the, the local plan uh, SS1 supports substantial sustainable development, which protects and enhances the character, quality and diversity of the district's green infrastructure and local landscape and the wider countryside. This building does not enhance or help the character, it detracts from it. Local plan policy SS9 respects the form, scale and character of the landscape through design materials. Contrary to this, it doesn't respect the, the councillor uh, recommended to as a debate, not as a of councillor. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. You can only speak as to not as your ward representative. Just need to be brave how you're wording some of your comments. Right. Right. Uh, SSD3, the local plan, is concerned with protecting distinctiveness of character. Right. And it's an important feature of this particular the field is open, so I, I don't think it does detract from this. And then the local plan, SD12, uh, is that the quality of the materials on the building and the, the quality of the building and the design of it isn't appropriate for where it is. And then Green uh, belt or its adverse effects, it adversely affects its open character by being a building where it's being an open field. And MD2, it doesn't enhance, it detracts from the character. D3 states that the proposals on the edge of settlement should enhance the open landscape and respect important routes into and out of the site. It doesn't do this. And when the, the edges are down, the building becomes very, very apparent. Are there any other comments to be made? That's ready. Thank you, Chair. Maybe, maybe if we can use the word screening again. Maybe if, it, if we make sure that those edges can't be taken down and it remains at the same roof on it, it is, after all, a lambing pen. A lambing shelter. I don't know how much you could enhance any field with a lambing shelter. Okay. Any other comments to be made? No. Just um, in terms of comments that Councillor Dayton's made, Chair, as we just discussed with um, Councillor Arms, it would advise members not to in this instance place a um, great weight on your green belt policies because as the building is an agricultural it could otherwise be appropriate development but council date is, is correct yeah the consideration that you certainly have to have this afternoon is the impact of the building on the character of the area the judgment you need to make as a committee is whether it's acceptable or not the view of officers is that the building is an agricultural building and therefore by definition, needs to be located in an agricultural setting, and in our view, set against the hedgerow and close to that new junction is, in our view, the best location for the building in this case. If it was a matter that you wish to have additional softening of the building, then you may impose a condition to require landscaping, for example, and you could put a condition on requiring the hedge to be retained at a certain height, and it would, of course, require maintenance going forward as well and ultimately chair that's the judgment that members need to make and clearly if you are of the view that it's inappropriate for those reasons it adversely impacts the character of the location and the next step of course would be for the council to take a portion of action to secure buildings and move so that would be the consequence state thank you any other comments we're all aware of how to uh, conduct ourselves over the motion, so I'll ask if there's a motion on the table. Councillor Armitage? Yeah, I know we've dealt with officers' recommendation, but uh, we do uh, audition as it is used for agricultural purposes. I'll second that, Chair, and I agree with what uh, Williams just said. And if we can soften it, build the screen around it, 
whether they raise the ground levels around it to, to, to save any impact there, whichever way they want. But to stay as an agricultural building, to retain the hedge height and, and soften it by any other way we see fit. Yeah. Left that with Adrian. But if, we, if the members are minded to grant consent on those basis, on that basis, chair, certainly the so probably going to put in the condition that it will be held in braces for climate and to use only for agricultural purposes. Um, but I would suggest in those instances, if, if members are minded to, to I say, grant permission under those terms, would be secure the conditional landscaping scheme and the management of the edge road. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear then, members, it's to approve officer recommendations, the retention of the building as an agricultural building for agricultural purposes, and then the appropriate uh, management scheme to ensure um, appropriate screening of the building takes place, retention of the of the edge. And here's some solid members. Yes. Thank you. Do you want to go to uh, Councillor Armitage? For Councillor Cooper? For. Councillor Clough? For. Councillor Dayton? For. Councillor Elliott? For. Councillor Lacey? For. Councillor Liggett? For. Councillor Jones? For. Councillor Ridgeway? For. Councillor Rouse? Four. And Councillor Ruff? Four. That's unanimous, Chair. The uh, motion's passed. Thank you, Councillors. We will move on to item seven. Planning appeal is lodged and determined. There's uh, limited things to say, Chair, other than you will see that the dismissal of the appeal. Uh, Weekly does make interesting reading, Chair, in terms of green belt policy and protection of ancient woodlands. So, as with all decisions, it's worth worth reading. I'll perhaps leave it at that. Um, in terms of the other appeals, Chair, you will notice that we've had a, a lot of appeals come through, so it is bringing with it its consequent work. I'm not, not seeking the um, Stars chair, but um, just just bear in mind that with the appeals coming through, then maybe bring with them the additional impact on it as well. But with any of the decisions, hopefully, members are still receiving those decisions in hard form via email. I hope so. If there are any questions about them, then do please let us know. There have been some particularly interesting ones in terms of, of green belt development recently, which I'm sure members are. Okay, thank you. I can know the matters of urgency. So with that, I'll close the meeting and thank you for attending this afternoon.